speed of changing Cause I build my life around you But time makes you bolder Even children get older And I'm getting older too Hey there friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and I'm excited to bring you a lesson for Landslide today, the Fleetwood Mac classic song. So uh, I have recently put a poll over on my Patreon page, listing about 10 or 15 of the most requested songs I've gotten, asking you all to vote which one you want to see, and Landslide has the crown at the moment. So had to turn that into a lesson. This is one I used to love playing back in the day. I think the Smashing Pumpkins version is how I learned of this song, and 422 guitar lessons later, I'm finally getting around to making a YouTube video for it. So let's get into it. I do have the sheet music as usual, you all, you all know how it works. Four pages, absolute handcrafted goodness. Page one gives you the lyrics and chords and tab for the intro, all that stuff, sort of a cheat sheet, right? Pages two, three, and four give you the, the chords, fretboard diagrams, tabs, uh, strumming patterns, uh, chord progressions, all kinds of finger picking guidance here for this song, whether you want to do Travis style or you just want to do a basic one string, one finger per string approach. This is what I use when I learned the song, right? It's all there waiting for you. No matter how uh, far along you are in your guitar journey, I got you covered here. So let's get into this one. I'm going to be capo on the third fret. Uh, that lets you play along with Fleetwood Mac. And uh, no more talking here. Let's dive on to this lesson. It's Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. Let's do it. First up, we're going to look at the sequence of C, G over B, and A minor 7 that make up the intro to this song, the verse of this song, and half of the chorus. So basically, this is 80% of the song. You learn these three chords. I'll show you how you can either strum it or do finger style. And you can play, uh, play along with Landslide. So the first three chords here, the C, this G over B, and this A minor 7. We gotta learn these. Now, the C chord is a pretty typical chord, but what I want you to notice for this chord and all the others is that we're only gonna be on the middle four strings, okay? We're not gonna be playing the thickest or the thinnest string. Um, that's true for the C, it's true for the G over B, and it's true for the A minor 7. Another thing you can notice for these three chords is the bass note, right? The thickest note we're playing, it's sort of going from the third fret, fifth string, second fret, fifth string, to the open fifth string. So it's sort of walking down, right? And then the actual song, it's going to go back up to the G over B. So it's sort of walking down, and then back up, and then walk down again. It's a very like cyclical, circular kind of thing, right? Now, C, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, okay? Now when we switch to the G over B, here's what we want to have in mind. This finger, this middle finger, is going to stay on the same fret, but just go one string thicker, okay? From fourth string to fifth string, okay? That's all it's gonna do. And then we're gonna put our pinky down on this third fret of the second string, okay? So basically your pinky, when you're in that C chord, your pinky should just be ready to jump in, right? It's like, put me in coach, I'm ready. And then you go to that G over B, right? Second, open, open, third. That's our G over B. Now, back to the A minor seven, and that's gonna require us to move our middle finger back to where it was right, from fifth string to fourth string, and then put our index finger back where it was. So C to G over B to A minor seven, back to G over B. Get comfortable with these chords, memorize where your fingers need to go. And then when you're ready to sort of understand how they're used in the song, it looks like this, right? We're gonna be on one measure for each chord, right? So C, two, three, four, G over B, A minor seven, then G over B. Four counts, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I took my love and I took it down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You could basically start playing along and singing along just like that, even if you're just doing whether a strum or if you're just sort of grabbing all four strings like I'm doing. That would basically get you started with landslide, right? Now, before we get into finger style, you could, if you want to sort of do a strumming pattern, I would just recommend doing a sort of bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down, bass down. This could help you to sort of get used to the chord progressions. I took my love, then I took it down. Okay. I climbed the mountain and I turned around. So this is a great way to get comfortable with things. You could start singing along before you even get into the fingerstyle stuff. Now, before we get into fingerstyle as well, with this sequence here, 
every now and then, you're gonna stay on that A minor seven for two extra beats, and then switch to the G over B, only be on that for two beats, and then you start the whole thing over again, right? So she sings that when it's like, and the landslide brought me down, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, mirror. You get that? Basically, we go to the A minor, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the order of the chord stays the same. We're just sort of delaying the return. It sort of adds some, you know, unexpected uh, mini drama tension there before you bring things back home. It's a nice little touch, and you can you can bring that in freely. If you listen to the Smashing Pumpkins version, I think they do that like every time, at least from the quick YouTube video I watched um, just yesterday. So uh, that's how you play the first three chords that make up the bulk of this song, and that's the basic idea. Is you're on each one for four counts. Now let's look at the finger style because this is where it sort of it starts to sound like the actual. Uh, Fleetwood Mac version. Now, here's the deal. There's two different ways you could play this. When I learned this song, I learned it by taking these four fingers, thumb, index, middle, ring, and I sort of uh, attached them to these middle four strings. And it was like man-on-man -man defense in sports, right, where each finger is assigned to a certain string, and it stays on that string. And basically, you would go through each chord... You know, and my thumb is always playing the fifth string. My index is always playing the fourth string. You know, but, and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to explain that. But you also, in the recent years, I've sort of adopted this style. You could play it in sort of Travis style, where your thumb is sort of doing the bass notes on the fifth and fourth string here. And your index finger is bouncing between the second and third string. Now, this is a technique used in all kinds of songs. It's tricky to muster at first, though, to master at first. But if you can get over the hump with it and get um, comfortable with it, it, it's very, very, very practical. Well, it, it's tricky, but there's there's some benefits you get from it, and it sort of unlocks all kinds of cool doors. So I'll teach you both, okay? Because I really want you to um, be able to play this song, right? Now, if you want to learn it like I did, you basically, these four fingers on these four strings, okay? as I have tabbed out here. Now, you have to learn this picking pattern, and this picking pattern is gonna be the same for every chord, in this intro at least, right? And it's going to be going from the fifth string to third string, then fourth string to second string, then back to fifth string to third string to fourth string, rest. Five, three, four, two, five, three, four rest, right? Now you could also do the same pattern and sort of, if, if using the finger, you know, doing it by finger helps. Again, this is the same exact thing. Thumb, middle, index, ring, thumb, middle, index, rest. Thumb, middle, index, ring, thumb, middle, index, rest. Or you could do it by string name, right? Uh, A string, G string, D string, B string, A string, G string, D string. That one like hurts my brain, but I want you to find the, the memory and mnemonic device that helps you learn this. And then once you, um, if you're playing it in this way, you could actually practice this pattern when you're not playing the guitar. I was driving to get some tacos this morning and I was sort of had my hand on the gear shifter. Da, 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 da. I had landslide on the mind, man. So I was sort of getting used to this. And this builds up the muscle memory. It's a, it's a really great way to sort of build that up, right? So you would go through each of those chords for the C. G over B. A minor 7. G over B. And I have the thumb notes here highlighted. And there's a reason for that. But basically 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Basically, play these seven notes, and there's a sort of rest, rest, rest on the eighth count, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that's how you're gonna play it if you want to do one finger per string. Now, if you want to do Travis style. It's going to be the same exact notes, same exact chords, same exact timing. Only thing that's going to change is the right hand fingers. So in this case, our thumb is going to be going from fifth to fourth string on all the chords. A minor seven, back to the G over B, back to the C, and the G over B. And if you're practicing it like this, I recommend just doing the thumb first. Get used to this. Because once you add the index finger, it's going to get a little more, more tricky. But that would sound like this. And you could 
start singing. I took my love and I took it down. I climbed the mountain and I turned around. And I saw my reflection. You get the idea, right? This is basically what we're going to use for the intro and the whole verse, right? Now, here's where things change. At the very end of the verse, just before the chorus, we have this one change to this sequence, right? Where we're gonna to go to the D7 over F sharp instead of the G over B at the very end of this sequence. So it starts off the same, C, G over B, A minor seven, this new chord, D7 over F sharp. Okay, I'm gonna teach you this now. This is always gonna be the chord we play before we go to the G. Will I be afraid of changing? I'll teach you the chorus in a second, but this chord, this D7 over F sharp, I wanna talk about this. Now, the thing about this D7 over F sharp is we're always gonna to come to this chord from the A minor seven. So when you're learning this chord, I almost recommend sort of always starting with this A minor seven because it's sort of training your hands that, hey, whenever you have to go to this position, you're coming from the A minor seven position. Now here's one little cool thing. When you're in the A minor seven position, your index finger is already where it needs to be for the D seven over F sharp. You just keep this finger here, okay? The next thing we need to do, these are the two stars of this play, right? The middle finger and the ring finger. The middle finger is gonna stay in the second fret and go to the sixth string. The ring finger is gonna go to the second fret as well on the fourth string. So we would have second fret, open, open, second fret, and then first fret, right? That's our first fret note. Second, open, open, second, first fret. This is our D7 over F sharp, okay? So again, from the A minor seven to the D7 over F sharp. Left index finger is staying totally still. Now, as far as the notes we play, another big difference here is the bass note we play with our right thumb. It's no longer on the fifth string. It's down here on the sixth string. However, we're still gonna play the second, third, and fourth strings up here. So whether you're doing um, one finger per string, your thumb is the only one that has to change strings. It goes to the sixth string. These three fingers stay here and do the same pattern we already did. Or if you're doing it Travis style, okay, your thumb again has to go down to the sixth string, but it also has to jump between six and four, right? In the other parts of that intro, we were going from five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, six, four, six, four. Okay? It's a tricky part, but that's what we're going to have to do. Use the finger picking um, approach that you need um, to, that you find the most helpful. I also want to give a plug. I made a separate lesson for this. This is available on my Patreon page. It's a chord guide for landslide, and it looks at these two different ways to play your right hand, whether you're doing one finger per string or whether you're doing Travis style. And then what it does in this, in this sheet is it shows you each chord and then what the uh, picking pattern is and, you know, for that, whether you're doing one finger per string or you're doing Travis style, right? I really wanna help you visualize that. So this is a little bit of an extra thing for those of you um, on my Patreon page. Thank you for the support. It's really appreciated, right? But um, either way, that's gonna get us into the chorus. So, um, right, uh, in, in lyrically, she's saying, uh, can I handle the seasons of my life? She's gonna do that first sequence, the intro sequence. Oh, oh, I don't know. Back to the G over B. And then do the same sequence, but next time we do it, we're going to go to the D7 over F sharp at the end. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I don't know. Well, I've been afraid of changing because I... This is the last part we have to learn here. It's this... Uh, this chorus part, right? Now, this is gonna have some new chords as well. We're gonna have a G chord, a good old G major. We're also gonna have a D over F sharp, okay? I'll show you a few different ways to play that, and then we'll have an E minor. Those are the only three chords that are new to this section, and you're gonna play those three chords. You'll do the G, two, three, four, D over F sharp, E minor, two, 
three, four, E minor, two, three, four. Then we go back to the intro or the verse sequence, right? Because I built my life around you. Then we go to that D7 over F sharp. But love makes you crazy, and I'm making up the lyrics. And da 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 C, G over B, A minor seven, G over B. Okay, so we're almost there. Just these last three chords. Now the G. Um, page two of my sheet music, I have this mapped out. Uh, I don't really press down the fifth string note because we're never playing it, right? So I just mute it with my left ring finger right here. It's lightly, lightly leaning into it, sort of killing the sound. Sixth string is our bass note, right? And then open, open, open third. Okay, that's going to be our G. Now our D over F sharp, you have some options here. You could play like a regular D and then wrap your thumb. If you're able to do this, this works just fine. We're actually never really going to play the thinnest string. I have it written in here just for context. Another way you could play this, though, is similar to what we did for the D over F sharp, D7 over F sharp, right? These two fingers, second, open, open, second. And instead of doing your index finger up here, you're putting your pinky on the second string, third fret. Second, open, open, second, third. about this approach is you can basically um, go to the D7 position and then just add your pinky right it's a, it's a nice little like fallback so if you've already learned this D7 shape you could just add your pinky on that second fret note uh, second string note third fret and you have your D7 or, I'm sorry you have your D over F sharp okay so now that we have those two new chords and then the E minor is very straightforward basic E minor. We're never going to play the sixth, uh, the fifth string. I just push it down though out of habit. No real, um, not really losing anything there, assuming you're comfortable with the E minor. Now, as far as the sequence we use here, um, okay, this one for the G, two options. If you're playing it with one finger per string with your right hand, six string bass note for sure, and then just keep these fingers on the second, third, and fourth string. Same pattern. Right? The only difference compared to the C, as far as the pattern we're doing, is your bass note is on not on the fifth string, it's on the sixth string. Okay? That's if you're doing this style. Now, if you're doing Travis picking style, it's actually quite different. You're actually going to do sixth and fourth string for your bass note. And then you're going to do second and first string. F sharp. This is Travis style again. Six and four with your thumb. Then E minor. On that for two measures, right? So this whole thing is I've been afraid of changing because I've. And then after that, we go back to the C because I've built my life. Time makes you older and children get older and I'm getting older too. Um, so that's basically all we're going to do there is the G for one measure, and, uh, then the D over F sharp, then E minor for two measures. Then we go back to the regular uh, C and to G over B and A minor 7. And then we go to the D7 over F sharp and repeat it. But time makes you older. Children get old. I kind of muff, muff that. Da, da. Okay. Now, there's one thing I want to show you here to play it like Fleetwood Mac. What I did there on that first bass note of the G, if you can, keep your index finger where it was for the D7. Right, because we're coming from the D7, and you go to the G. Basically pinch the second string and sixth string at the same time, and then pull off on the first fret of the second string. When I pull off, I'm sort of bringing my hand like, like, like my hand wants to go three feet behind me on the ground. So it's sort of pushing into the strings, but at some point, That's how you do a pull-off. OK, 
Okay, so for context, that's going to be... Um, I don't know. D7. To the E minor. E minor again. Main walk down. I live my life without you. D7. But time makes you... So I have that tabbed out in my sheet music um, for the third sequence. And then that's basically uh, gonna be um, all there is to it. A couple other quick tips just for, for practical context here. One is, you know, I showed you this main pattern, right? When I learned this song, I actually, I, I talked about how there's only seven notes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rest. That eighth note is a sort of a rest, right? We're not playing anything. Now, when I was learning this song, I actually played something there. I did, you know, on that, that sort of eighth note, I just did the third string again. For me, what I liked about this was it was very steady, it was very predictable. There was no rests. When there was rests, it would mess me up, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Every eighth note, you're playing something. So you, it, it's kind of like uh, idle hands or, well, I don't know if that, <laughs> that really applies here. Basically, when you bring in rests, it gets a little bit tricky. So if, if, the, if that idea of the eighth note being a rest messes you up, with the rest, you could do this. And you'll notice on my playthrough, you're gonna see me just kind of freely go between these, right? Another thing you could do though, is add another rest, add an extra rest on the second note. So that would sound like this. basically the second pluck one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four second pluck comes on the two count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and okay Again, use these. I had this on my sheet music as well, page four. I just want to show you that you can dial it up. Dialing it up meaning like more stuff going on. Same tempo. I did slow down a bit. I'm not gonna lie. I took my love and I took it down. You could just do the fifth and fourth strings to, to dial it down even more. dial down even more. So my reflection. That's how you can use dynamics to your advantage here, right? You don't need to play at the same exact sort of level of intensity all the time, but keep your tempo the same. I am guilty. You saw me just do it. When I dialed it up, I went faster. When I dialed it down, I went slower. You got to be careful with that a little bit. If you're playing solo acoustic, that's fine. But if you're with a band and there's someone else leading the rhythm, you, you need to stay in the pocket, I, I'm assuming. I don't have too much experience playing with others, but but just be, be mindful of that, right? Just because you're playing more notes doesn't mean you need, you need to go faster. It's possible to keep a steady tempo, dial up the intensity, or keep a steady tempo and dial it down, right? You're staying in the beat, but you're playing less. You're not playing as loud. So anyway, y'all, that's going to do it. Um, again, if you want to get the sheet music for this, it has all the lyrics and chords and everything on page one, the intro tab. Pages two has the chords and the chord progressions. Page three has the three different sequences tabbed out. Page four has the Travis picking versus the one finger per string approach and some of those, those other things I showed you at the very end there. And then separately over on my Patreon page, if you want help with more of the instructional aspect of how to approach learning the finger style in general, this is more universally applicable, whether you wanna do the one finger per string approach versus the Travis style approach shows it for all the different chords that's available over there as well i'm trying to help you learn these concepts so that you can apply them to this and many other songs right so those are available 
Cole, thanks very much for watching. Um, I really appreciate all of you who are supporting me uh, through membership and all of you who voted for this song. I, I really uh, am happy to deliver lessons for the songs y'all are looking for. I hope this gave you what you're looking for, and uh, I'm going to take off now. Have a great one wherever you are, and until next time, bye-bye, my friends. No.